Is that there, Leona still open and available, but could go in a different direction depending on what they want. Could also just end up picking up something wildly different, right? We have seen last time they picked up uh, the Gragas 4369 at the stage. I'm gonna be honest, wasn't convinced by it. I don't think it's that high of a priority to take now. IG probably won't ban it as well, given how it went last game. Yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. It's gonna be the Leona by the looks of things. I think a bit of a safer lock in there. And you can tailor your bands around going for that top side as well. But over to the side of IG, whether or not they go for a jungler here will be the question. You'd anticipate a jungler, but maybe go for a blind pick and a solo. Look. Yeah, if they have like a particular jungler they really want, sure. But there's still so many high tier, high tier junglers open and available, especially since we've seen the introduction of like Hecarim into the meta. It means it's just more sort of available to pick. Uh, so clearly not concerned about being found out. They're actually going to go for the Camille uh, and it's a pretty big threat for the Jinx. It also works well on the Hecarim because obviously you can't engage nearly as easily. Uh, but on top of that, it means that it won't be picked against Zeri because I've seen drafts before where Nautilus and Camille very good answers into the pick. Now, IG, you can probably just ban things that are going to cause problems for the Camille in the top lane. You know, traditional lane counters are things like the Jax, like the Fiora, uh, and they will ban away that Jax first and foremost. Almost, JDG, if there's any junglers that you're really concerned about going up against, maybe the Xin Zhao would make a lot of sense to ban here. But actually going to start off with the TF. Uh, clearly not happy about the amount of impact that had in both the previous two games. I mean, the the aggressive destinies forward from Yuakai have been kind of inspiring. So I respect the twist of fate ban at this point because he has been having an amazing uh, series for himself see where the rest of the bands go as well rise already taken off the board tf taken off the board it could be a galio angle at this point with camille already locked in for ig it would be a really good option for them there's plenty of setup yeah i mean honestly jarvan's open available as well you could really just have an insane <laughs> dive where hope actually has no hope of surviving for now with the diana band away could have made a lot of sense to just facilitate the dive it feels like ig's goal with this comp will be to get on hope and just obliterate him Probably going to see a jungle pick here uh, and then leave their mid until last and give it the counter pick. Coming with the idea off that Zin Zhao. Obviously does really well in the Jinx as well, right? Can't auto attack him and really do anything to him while that ult is up and available. And they will lock that one in. Now for JDG, obviously the solo laners. Uh, Fiora is still open as a silent option, but honestly, I feel like it's been so team fight focused. I wouldn't be a huge fan of them going for a, a more silent focused pick. And 369 has been leaning heavily on this cannon as a go-to. Yeah, this and the Gragas have been his two big champions across the course of this split. Has the range advantage over the Camille, so have a pretty good cool point up there as well. Uh, I'm speaking, you know, with confidence there. I don't know the matchup particularly well, but I would just assume that Kenna with the ranged auto attacks does pretty well in the early game. Yeah, um, he holds up okay. He holds up fine. Now, blind pick mid lane. We'll Ooh. see where Yagao's going to go with the Vigarb. I actually love this. I love this so much. It's such a good pick for sh shutting down short range compositions, right? And you look at IG, everyone is short range, right? Your longest range champion is Zeri. Isn't saying much. The cage will have a massive impact. It looks like IG might be going for that Galio as you were hinting to. Definitely solidifies the dive potential. But the way I think about it, right, is you're trying to get on top of this backline, get on top of this Jinx. There's a slicing Maelstrom. There's the, the Vigar's Cage as well. The Horizon Focus um, just will cause so many... No, the Event Horizon, sorry. Will cause so many problems when you're trying to dive in. Well, that Galio does come on through. We talked about it earlier on in the draft. But is it going to be good enough to take on two purple Yordles at the same time? There's a lot of purple on that team. Lulu would be over the moon. I have to see. IG with the Camille Galio. I feel like this is a combo we haven't seen in a long time. It used to be uh, incredibly high priority. The setup that Camille can give to Galio to just make sure those ganks work on the top side. 369 is not going to have a fun time. Yeah, I feel like the, the it, both champions individually were stronger before, right? Camille used to be, you know, basically the old Gwen. Uh, and Galio was there was that period where he was just incredibly strong. The combo still works, still holds up. And if in terms of dealing with an immobile lady carry, there's not much you can do. I mean, even if you're a mobile lady carry, right? The only option is there's one time in the game where you have a stopwatch, which is your safety net. But other than that, you'll basically just get slammed on. But the thing is, I really like the draft that's come out here from JDG. I think the Vigar is perfectly placed. I feel like the short range composition of IGs will really get punished by these tools. The one thing I will say is I feel like in the early game, the Xin Zhao Galio combo will have more agency, right? So IG, you want to hit the ground running, get ahead in the early game, 
mid game they can use that momentum to carry it out but i feel like if it starts to go late it's going to be so hard dealing with the Vega. Vega really warps the game when he's in it because you have to play around these cage timers. It just shuts you down so heavily. Yeah, we'll have to see. I mean, in the early game, JDG doesn't feel like they have that much to bring to the table, right? A lot of scaling across their composition, which does give me a little bit of nerves for what, what can happen to them. Because this series so far, as far as I'm concerned, if JDG got ahead like in game number one, they just took over the game completely. Really clean stuff. And game number two, IG had the lead and it felt like JDG was str struggling to find a way back into the game. They got a couple of good picks and a small window, but could not convert it in the end. So the early game is going to be crucial here. JDG somewhat opting out of it. Yeah, and that's the thing is that we saw before uh, Kanavi when he was on the graves into the Hecarim, how you can very heavily aggressed onto that pick right no flash available in the early game uh means you can invade it quite comfortably before the ult is there it's a bit of a risky one so i want to see ig using that aggression i want to see them use the fact that they have this galley with the mid lane one of the problems with vegar is that he doesn't shove so well near the levels and obviously you don't want to be shoving you want to be last hitting with your q when you can obviously you know in in a game of league of legends at this level you can't get every single cs because sometimes pushing the wave takes priority but I expect you kind of be pushing it and trying to make an impact with this pick. I want to see agency. I want to see go Mr. Size. If you get Zook ahead, if you get Wink ahead, that's a Wink on. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm a little sad that Shun and Lucas aren't trying to do to Kanavi what Kanavi did to Shun <laughs> earlier on in the series. The Graves versus Hecker and going for that level one invade and just shenanigans that occurred thereafter. It's going to be a very safe start as both junglers, by the looks of things, going for a full clear or at least uh hecker i'm going to be going for the full clear we'll see as shun gets to the top side whether he wants to do the same but also that top side can be pretty volatile as a hook comes out on the bottom lane from lucas just some early trading there but ken and camille very gankable for both players. yeah i feel like you know camille's got pretty good setup but i think both have safety tools right as long as g69 has his e he can sort of dash away and as long as as Luca has his hook shot, he can, he can get out of the six situation. Again, Luca's really sharp on interrupting the Zenith Blade from the Leona. So Missing do the same thing to him in reverse in the previous series, just showing some of the yeah. proficiency these supports have in this matchup. It's kind of hilarious that we've got to the point. Oh, interesting. We have uh, Nautilus versus Leona. Nice. It's 22 to 14 in favor of Nautilus so far this split. And I will say, Nautilus generally speaking has been the priority i'd say in drafts most teams preferring that nautilus over the leona so interesting to see that correlating um but yeah we've got to a point in the lpl where we see these level two all-ins on the bottom side i don't even feel like we need to play by play them anymore they never end up in a kill they usually end up in just a heavy trade and it's all just yeah. about pressure in that lane. i think the big thing with the the nautilus the reason why it's, it's been proud of it more is the fact that it can't really be countered by cleanse nasty i think that's one of the issues with uh with leona it's like obviously you look at the situation right wink has cleanse hope doesn't we saw that in the previous game daily carry against the leona takes cleanse and as much as glacial augment helps with that because the slow field's still on the ground it really hurts in a team fight when you have an extra defensive summoner shuns in the top side flashes forward and will finish three six nine we said it was gankable and shun knew it as well first one and look at that wave this is so freezable for Zeke. Yeah, and honestly, I feel like Jun could just stay around and wait for the TP. ID looks for something bot. TP does come in, and the wave state isn't a good spot for Zuka. And that's the thing, right? You have tools to keep yourself safe, but I feel like the setup is a bit better for Zuka. But on top of that, when you're sort of pushing so heavily in that scenario, as you want to do on Kennen, right? You want to be harassing. You want to be pushing the lane to make things difficult for Camille. You are vulnerable. They are pushing in this bottom side as we saw the reset coming out from the So you need to get a wave underneath the tower there in the bottom lane. But Lucas might be able to hold it himself. We'll have to wait and see as the reset will likely come out from Hope. First Drake onto the map in about 30 seconds. So now let's talk IG game plan, right? Because level six obviously going to be a big moment for Yuakai. But are we expecting to just see Shun just ganking like crazy, like we just saw in that top side? I think if the window arises, yes. But honestly, I think you wait until Yukai hits level 6, roam into the side lane, and you just look to dive the enemy bot lane, right? It's so effective in that manner. 
Gagao won't be able to answer. And, and also, bear in mind, JDG have burned both of their teleports, so they don't even have those tools to potentially assist in terms of defense. I do like that there is this window where JDT are actually looking for a bit of proactivity trying to contest. They won't find anything, but they got some vision down. And this vision is really vital because you want to be tracking the Galio early. As soon as you see him walking down, as soon as you see Sean heading towards the bot lane, you have to be cautious about something happening. But it looks like Sean's focus may be towards 369 once again. No flash. Three, six, I mean, Zerka is really, really low right now. Actually flashed to try and get the stun there. He'll be stunned up himself. 369, one more auto, oh, but he disaster. can't get it. So close to making it happen, but Shun saves the day. Yeah, and the shield coming out from the Camille will make a big difference in that one. Obviously, Kennen has a fair bit of burst, but just wasn't able to kill him quick enough. And now, IG, a pretty significant advantage for their top jungle. Definitely sets them up well, and having their ult available, it means things are even more vulnerable, right? We already saw them pull off two ganks. The Hectic Ultimatum is such a problem for anyone who's, you know, getting ganked on repeat. And now as well, that big wave, no TP from 369 to catch it. Huge lead now for Sean and Strength not actually been done just yet. Can't, I don't think they're even going to go for this one. So really nice advantage. That's upside for Sean. Yokai happily just farming up. And, you know, the ranged versus melee matchup in that mid lane, you'd expect maybe a bit of a CS lead for Yagao, but it's not really happening so far. Yokai doing a really good job of keeping farmed up in yeah, mid lane. I I think it's just a thing in this matchup is that the Galio just won his games. <laughs> like, you can't do anything to him as the Vagar because he always has his, like, his W magic shield up. So he just walks up, one hits the wave, and then walks out and can do what he wants. And uh, it, it, you either, if you get, oh, he's coming Yagao in. flashes away, but he's going to be taunted. And Zucker is here as well. Hextech ultimatum. You expect the Galio to fly to the Camille, but how about a bit of roll reverse? Love to see it, right? Apply that pressure mid. Put your guy on the back foot. Zuka can return top and catch that wave. And it means the bot side of the map, JDG, have to be really careful because they are down a member. This is what we want to see. We said we need proactivity from IG because the later the game gets, the harder things become. I want to see where that first ult comes down from the Galio. Ideally, getting a dive in the bot lane, putting hope behind would be perfect. Nine get a really good trade on that top side. The fact that he's died two times, still up in CS just because of the matchup alone here. He is now level six. So next time a gank comes up towards that top lane, 369 will have the opportunity to try and turn it around. He almost killed Zucker in that last one. He can get an ult off as well. In a really good spot. 10 CS lead in that bottom lane as well. But really, the biggest lead is in that jungle. 700 gold in favor of Shun after all of these early games. Yeah, and now Kanavi does have the ultimate available. Big power spike who does want to join into fights. Can obviously make a massive impact. But uh, for now, just kind of be farming. Not really had too much presence. And it's expectation, right? You don't have prior mid, and that makes such a massive difference when you're trying to make plays. And now I feel like it's not really relieved because of the ultimate being available for the Galio. So I want to see IG look for an opportunity to pick up this Herald. This Herald is so big if you want to continue a momentum of the game and get things rolling already. Shun is heading over to start this one off. Yukai has priority in the mid lane. Zuka will TP in the top and the wave is pretty heavily stacked in his favor. So I don't think JDG can contest this. No, even if they could, I'm not sure that this would be wise to contest at this point in the game. You're a thousand gold down against the composition that does real well in these skirmishes. But missing in hope. Yeah, I was going to say they could look for weak, but he just zips on over the wall. And he'll be perfectly safe on this one. So Shun getting himself that Rift Herald. We'll see where he opts to drop that one down. I wouldn't be surprised to see it go bot, but, you know, with how should has been playing so far this game, I'd be too surprised to see it go top either. Yeah, honestly, I'm liking this. I like that they're moving down in this vicinity, right? Really easy setup, but actually he's going to start off looking for the dragon. And, oh, I think he's going to get caught out here. Yeah, he's going to be pulled back as well. There's the stun coming on through for the slice of Maelstrom. Zucker. Just going to be finished off here. Kanavi has to take the kill, unfortunately. I'm not sure he wanted to. It looked like he was trying to give that kill over, but it's not going to happen. As I say that, he then takes an entire wave, so maybe he did want the kill. <laughs> yeah, he wants the gold. And I think the thing is, right, uh, we finally see the level 6 from the Hecarim able to make that gank happen. It's in a long lane in top, so easy to run down a target. Kind of a mistake from Zuka in that situation, right? You know your team's going for a bot lane play. Uh, should have been playing it a bit safe because he was barely overextended there. And now, 369, although he misses out on the kill and the wave, will get a flight from Soul. Certainly will. And 369 can 
Clear this wave away. And, you know, Cannon, not the quickest at clearing waves early on in the game. You get better as it goes on, but we'll be able to die at least a couple of CS and get a reset off. Hope in the meantime, did get one plate down in this bottom side as well, if I'm not mistaken. I am mistaken. He has not got any yet. Maybe he can get one now, but regardless, all things considered, we're somehow relatively even in gold. I would have expected IG to be further ahead at this point, but with the CS lead in top, small CS lead bot lane as well, and a CS lead in the jungle, the gold is actually relatively even. Yeah, and things are honestly going pretty good, right? Yukai's level 9, he's had his ultimate for 3 levels, hasn't used it. And that's the thing, right? Anytime you've not used the ultimate, it's not returning off cooldown. The ideal scenario is you get a good playoff pretty early, and then it's coming back, and then you can make another and just chain it together. But now, though, it's kind of been a little bit passive after those early levels with the side of IG. And again, they need to set the pace in this game. Herald's still in the pocket for Shun. If he wants to look to use that in the top side... Or he's just content stealing away some camp. 369 almost has slicing Maelstrom up again, and it looks like Shun. Just gonna go for the reset, not interested in trying to make a dive happen. I think that's the wise decision when Kennen is gonna have ult. And has a, a Zonyas by the way as well. Oh yeah, he's oh my god, he's finished his Zonyas. Yeah. First item, so, no less. I respect I it, mean, honestly. Yeah. It really makes it's like the biggest counter to the Camille Gallia, right? Is the stasis. So you know you're gonna need it in the game. And it just means you're extremely difficult to dive. Quink chased out of the lane. Luckily, he's playing a uh, 2022 champion, so he can just completely exit the lane at any moment. We'll just get control of that bottom lane. Should be able to just shove away for free there at that point. This does have that 10 CS lead to work with. It's going to be Harold coming up in another three minutes. Same story for the Drake. IG managing to get both. That Harold getting relatively close to timing out here for sure. Now, I wonder where he's going to drop it. Might just slam it mid hit. Yeah, I think he's going to go for two plate play mid. And it makes sense, like, if you take down the mid lane tower, it's hard to do against Vega. Because we're going the game, but... Oh, I know. Flash forward coming through onto Zucker here. And the slicing Maelstrom for 369. CC after CC. And, you know, honestly, not the cleanest dive coming out from JDG, but it doesn't matter when it's 3v1. You've got a minion wave. You've got full health bars. They make it happen. I don't know where that was going, Hope. <laughs> what? Yeah, I mean, no idea. I think honestly. it was aimed at mid. It must have been aimed yeah, at mid. Yeah, it must have right? been aimed at mid, right? We'll not speculate on that. Now, you do see IG. They've obviously got a good amount of tower damage on the mid lane tower. They're also threatening bot as well. So it's not like they weren't doing anything in that time, but very hard for Duke to avoid that dive. You know, the Yona tanked it for a fair bit of time. Missing had a stopwatch. 369 had the Zonyas. There's no real way you get a turnaround. But now, IG, we're finally getting that bot lane pressure that we're hoping for. But just as it starts off, they're going to back off fairly quickly. Kanavi in the vicinity. And really, I feel like we should have seen Opa Bissing smash into the ground at this point of the game. Yeah, I mean, plenty of dive opportunities. It feels like IG are almost... I feel like nervous isn't quite the right word, but not being as proactive tentative. as we want them to be. Yeah, tentative, maybe. They feel cautious. And I'm not sure with this composition that you have the space to be cautious, right? You keep yeah. on saying, we need to see IG putting their best foot forward. Well, not putting either foot forward at the time being. Right, at this point, level 10 on the Galio, both hasn't been touched. And it's a long cooldown, right? So, as I said before, you want to use it and then have it of, like working towards being up again as much as possible what's the point of the galio pick if you're just going to get out farmed by a vega really because um, when it comes to 20 30 minutes a game i know who i would rather have on my team and it definitely isn't the galio ah oh, mate you gotta think about the voice lines like galio's voice lines are pretty up there like character wise canonically oh, yeah and vega is would, pretty annoying have... yeah exactly Tiny Master of Evil versus Giant Anti-Magic Colossus. I know which one I'd have. Uh, Galio is just a Chad of League of Legends, let's be real. That's true. He's a legend. He's awesome. I, he, if you ever are tilted, but you want to keep playing, play Galio. He's like the ultimate one champion. He just chats to you. It's great. And you can play the chicken skin as well. That one is a banger, honestly. <laughs> it, it, it squawks on you. Anyway, Dragon is up. It's making a squawking. <laughs> I don't think Dragon squawk, actually. There's a fear in the bottom side. Lucas the target. Flame Chopper's underneath him. Double TP, though. Hope's in trouble, but he's still firing away. Gelfoss not quite enough to finish off Lucas. And now the rest of the squad is here. 369, great ulti. Sansed. 
by the hero's entrance, though, and Konami finishes off Lucas. Now a taunt onto Hope. He's happy to be auto attacking the Galio all day long. One more kill Look for Hope. Wink. Gets the reset, but he goes down. Now missing chase out. It's IG winning the fight. Is the reset for Wink? He charges forward. Two kills for him, and he's skating on forward. Gets himself a triple. He already has an MVP, and he wants a couple more. A messy fight from JDG and the prime opportunity for IG to get the composition to work. Everyone was mixed up in the middle. They got big value out of the Galley Ultimate, but also Wink on this as Zeri was completely untouched, right? They didn't get a chance to set up. They didn't get a chance to defend Hope. Have your guy with the cage to keep the Zeri at bay. And we see, you know, the start off engaged is kind of poor. Solar Flare Burn, Onslaught of Shadows all into the stopwatch and wink ults instantly and this whole fight is stacking up the overcharge getting more and more movement speed and you'll see pretty much throughout this entire fight just constantly having a target hit and in the meantime we see this tp coming from your right walks forward instantly gets rooted into a taunt cage does basically nothing uh, and then at this point wink has just built up so many stacks this is prime opportunity for us to carry and again we're, we're talking about how great JDG's comp is for scaling, but it's the opposite story for IG, right? They're great right now. All of their chaps are really good right now. And it feels like JDG perhaps a little overzealous to try and contest this one. Oh, will chase Yuakai out of that bottom side. The rest of the squad were on the way, but it's a 3,000 gold lead right now in favor of IG. This is what we said we needed to see. IG picking up the pace, forcing the issue. Managing to do it for the time being. Tier 1 goes down in the mid lane. And in the meantime, Herald also being taken by Shun. They have gone from a basically even game and they have catapulted themselves into the lead. Yeah, and especially with so much gold being on the Zeri, she is the biggest scaling element of IG's composition, right? She holds up really well in the later stages. And if they find momentum with it, that's where JDG can really struggle, right? It said, if you go to the team fights later on, composition of JDG has good answers. I don't think there's anything that answers a hyper fed Zeri. And now, Herald's gonna get thrown down top. and find build up momentum. 369, what are you doing? Uh, he's dodging everything is the answer. Three, six, All right, okay. nine. I don't know how he got away with that, but get what away with it. What is that doing again from home? I swear these ultimates have just... Yeah. <laughs> Look, I love it. Think how, how proactive he is with his ult, right? Sometimes we have these ultimates where people like try and use them for poke. I get that. This kind of just feels like Hope is using them to communicate with his teammates. He's sending a message. Well, that's a message being sent to Wink as well. It's a message saying you're stuck in the baby cage and you're not going anywhere, buddy. Yeah, I love the fact that, you know, you can have all this movement speed. You can be a champion that was made in 2022. You can have a lot of outplay potential, but there's nothing you can do with the Vega when you're in that cage. <laughs> yeah, look it up. Looking for an all in on the top side for the Solar Flare. He's outnumbered. He did not realize what he had got himself in for. And now a stun on the shot as well. Oh no, Galio is coming in. Maybe it's the turnaround. That's going to be one missing about to fall as well. The turnaround from you and Kai. Triple kill. Reinforcements are there and the Galio comes in clutch. An overcommit from the fight from JDG, right? They were already in a net positive play. They commit too hard. Yukai flies in and the Galio is super relevant right now. Now Yukai might just be caught out. Oh, but that Vygar interaction, the stun only procs once. Yeah. And it means that Yagao goes down. Great play from Yuakai. If you E backwards into the cage, you can go through the other side with the other part of the E. Really nicely done by IG. Now they've just suddenly got a 5,000 goal lead out of nowhere. Right? Yes, they had the play that was positive the bot side. But it feels like JDG felt like suddenly they had control. They had something they could offer. And now things have swung vastly in the other direction. Thanks to his power takes. And again, Zuka goes a little bit overconfident. I think the play here is he wants Galio to back him up. But so much is committed here again. It's like so many resources are expended by JDG. And then they're trying to kill the Zin Zhao. It's obviously not the easiest target to kill. Galio flies her in in this perfect setup just to clean up on all these kills. And it's so funny to see as well because you see Shun goes for the ulti, knocks everyone away from him. And then everyone on JDG is like, well... He's used his ulti, which means we can't hit him from range. So let's all jump into the ulti to kill. Ah, oh, no. Galio. <laughs> it's like you see it dawn on them. They're like, oh, no. We've made a terrible mistake. IG punishing beautifully. Yuakai with a triple kill. And look at the scoreboard. It's getting massively out of control now. In favor of IG. JDG being pushed to their very limits. 
you see a tower picked up top and the objective bounty will go over to jdg there's so much pressure coming on the other side actually you go oh the ult he dodged it. Dodge he dodged it. it. Beautifully done by Zerka. I wasn't sure if it had actually gone through or not. The stun will not land either, and it means IG get away with this one as well. In the meantime, 369 split pushing on the top side of the map. And the tier two did survive ultimately, so positive for JDG slightly. Yeah, I mean, that's the second objective bounty as well. So we just had a 5,000 gold lead. It's now 3,000. Just a matter of minutes. JDG picking up massively. And you get that extra gold from killing a tier two on the side lane. Now, IG looking towards this dragon. They are still ahead. And this would be their third if they can secure it. Here we go. TP coming out from 369. He knows he has to be a part of this fight, but immediately locked up. Has to use the Zonyas straight off the bat. Solar Flare comes in. 369 now onto Wink on the back line. Can anyone finish the kill though? Hope gets knocked up and he'll be taken down by Shun, but he jumps forward. He cannot finish. Wink, double kill on the Zeri. It's three for nothing. And it's just an awful fight by JDG, but it's not over yet. Certainly isn't Zika now moving forwards. Missing, trying to survive, but Yagao cannot protect him. That will be Drake. That will be the end of the fight. Unless Yagao, he still wants a little bit more, apparently. That's going to be the stun coming on through. Drake will finally go down. Yagao realizes he's got to back up. Yeah, and they've started a Baron already. They're just this fairly quickly, but I think Kanavi should be up in time to make it here. Has the ghost as well to close the distance. Whether he can get a steal or not is another conversation, but they will respect that and back away. But man, you know... That was probably the worst fight I've seen this series to take. JDG, I have no idea why you opted into that. Yigao wasn't even there. So, like, we start off. Yigao is still recalling if you look at the minimap, right? Kanavi dives into the Galio. Ults out again. Doesn't even get over the wall. And then it's such a mess. And look at the TP now coming in from Yigao. He TPs right on top of the Galio, which is not where you want to be. And Hope, the whole point of this composition was the Vega provided protection for the Jinx. As oh saying, my uh, days, it's pure chaos. There we go. There's a kill for Yagao. Sean on the front line trying to protect the rest of his team. JDG grouped up as a five and now with an advantage with Yukai out in the picture. Maybe this is an opportunity for them. Solar Flare gets a slow but not a stun. It'll just be the tier one and a pick. I think you've seen the stock difference when JDG has set up properly and you have this vague arcade to pick people out, stop the engage potential. Yukai obviously going down there, but they need to set it up properly. JDG have the tools. They are still behind, however. Just need to make sure, right? Hope is the priority. Keep them alive. Keep you guys safe. Keep the, keep the backline grouped up together. All right. Time for our national Zonyas watch here. As we have two Zonyas on the side of JDG. One for Yagao, one for 369. We've got a Zonyas in the mid lane for Yukai. And then we also have a stop watch on our Camille. So keep your eyes out for those stasises in that next fight, because there are going to be many of them. And it's going to be crucial to dodge things like the Galio or things like a lot of the damage out from Wink, although we'll have to dodge a lot of that since it's so persistent. We'll have to see how this next fight goes. I mean, realistically, I'm just looking at Wink. I feel like Wink is the, the be all and end all for IG. He's the damage in this comp. I feel like there's, like there's still uh, Camille, right? And the, the Zin Zhao is still very relevant now. I feel like really, I'm just watching Yigao, honestly. These cages, where it's always nice whenever Yigao is being targeted by the Observer and uh, we get to see like the cage cooldown. That is always the ideal situation because then I'm just counting down to this backup because it's such a massive tool just to slow down the fight. Stop them from engaging now. IG are fishing for something here. Yeah, JDG are not backing down either. I was expecting them to just back away, clear the wave on the tower, but no, they are happy to go for a fight if IG wants it, which seems a little overzealous to me, but you know what? I'm not a pro player. They are, so maybe they're right. We'll have to wait and see over the course of the next couple of minutes. As Yaga gets the cannon here, and now pushing forward. 369 is here, and I love that JDG are like, you know what? Sod it. Just group as five. Just stand as a five-man unit. Let's see if we can win the team fight. Especially here, when you're in the jungle, right? The Kennen and the Vagar, both of their AOE tools get so much value. And also, they're so close to their towers, it's impossible for IG to flank, right? It's not like anyone's going to be coming from your base, so it's an ideal position. What gets dangerous is when they have to push out and there's threats of flanks coming in from Yukai and Zuka. But for now, they're looking for the engage. 
Engage on this bottom side, Solar Flare there onto Lucas. He is one shot before the fight even begins. Zerka has to back away, shun the target once again. Galio coming in, but he's late. 369 already fallen, didn't even get to all. And a fear across the whole team. Maybe an opportunity, but Yuokai with a great taunt to turn it around. And it's Wink free firing once more, diving under the tower with a double kill. Kanavi left to clop away into the base, but Shun actually wants to keep chasing this one. Won't be able to find the tug. They're not able to shut down Wink, and honestly, I feel like Na'Vi, this Hecarim's not waiting for them. He keeps diving in, and it just leaves the backline vulnerable. The gold lead is enough for IG. 6,000 ahead at this point, and now Wink doing plenty of damage to these towers. He's going to try to clear the way. Can Na'Vi <laughs> try to find time? He just goes down. He can't even kill the wave. Does actually finish off Shun. He got a shutdown as well. That's 900 gold that Kanavi just got, and he saves the game. Yeah, and critically, he kills the jungler, right? So it means that the objectives aren't a clear thing. I feel like if Shun had survived there, maybe they're gonna just head it straight over to Baron, but we'll see the replay. And this initially goes pretty okay, right? They kill the Nautilus, disperse him out. The ult from Galio isn't actually that good for IG. It's like a defensive one. But then Kanavi opts to fly in here, right? Because the cage comes down. Why not just hit the Galio? He ults forward, allows the Galio to get onto his backline, and then Wink obviously just cleanses the fear. So I think it was just overcommit. You have to play kiting backwards, and I think they got two overzealous. The flash from Yukai really instrumental. And bear in mind, they are so far behind at the moment. It really becomes you have to be pixel perfect in these team fights. Interesting TP from Zuka there. I mean, from base, but it's to try and get priority for this Drake. This would be Soul for IG, and it feels like IG have controlled the Drakes pretty much all series long. JDG have to find the fight. We want them to kite back if they can. Hope has to survive. Same story for Wink on the other side as well. Blue will take and Wink will want to grab that one. 369 is behind enemy lines, flashes forward. It's a huge ulti coming out from him, but Wink's still going strong. 369 is golden. Shun on the front line is about to go down, but he survives for the time being. And Wink can just hammer away onto missing. He's focusing the support, but it doesn't even matter. There's a double kill for the brand new AD carry. Turn it into three as it's a full house for IG. IG crush it and Wink is untouched. MVP of the last game. Comes back on this roster, and I think there's a good chance he might be for this one as well. Really strong performance, a great re-debut into the league. Beautifully done here by IG, and honestly, I would have said JDG were the favorites coming in today. But I knew this one was going to be a bloodbath, and boy, did it deliver. More than a kill a minute, absolutely mental. And IG making a statement showing they are not a bottom of the table team. This is a team that will contend for playoffs. And honestly, considering the series against EDG, where yes, they lost, but they challenged them. This series win against JDG, the scoreline for IG isn't stellar but they have a lot of momentum. I think they are looking better and better as the weeks go by. They've made a couple adjustments. Zook in the top lane has looked very solid. Wink in this first series has looked great. I'm feeling hyped. I'm feeling excited. Yeah, I mean, IG, what's not to like right now? What's not to be excited about? This is a team that are making waves in the RPL. And JDG is the squad that have been on form recently. This is a squad that it seems to, it seemed like they were just getting 